morning everyone welcome to this second lecture of the module 4 in this lecture we will discuss about the gasification process upstream processing as well as the downstream processing also the comparison of this conventional gasification with advanced gasification techniques such as sub or supercritical water gasification and plasma gasification process gasification is the conversion of solid and liquid feedstock into useful and convenient gaseous product that can be burned to release energy or can be used as a feedstock for the production of value added chemicals. So, the gaseous product obtained after the gasification process can directly be burned to release the energy or can be processed further to produce value added chemical. Gasification, it is an established technology and the commercial application of which dates back to 1830. So, if you look at this particular chart here, so it shows the first commercial application of the gasification dates back to 1830 and in the beginning years coal and peat were used as a feedstock material for the gasification process, feedstock material for gasification process and in the 18th century the nascent idea of the process was to produce town gas and that is mainly for lighting and the cooking purpose and around 1920 the major shift came in this field when it was used to produce synthetic chemicals. So, this is a major shift happened in the gasification process here around 1920 when the produced gas was used to prepare or manufacture synthetic chemicals from the gasified product. And during World War II, biomass gasification system it played a significant role when due to shortage of the petroleum wood gas generator were used to produce gasogen it is also called as a gasogen and the produced gasogen were used to power motor vehicles and by 1945 even the heavy vehicles were powered by the gasification system. Now, why gasification? Because the gasification essentially converts potential fuel from one form to another and apart from that there are other three motivation for such transformation of energy from one form to the another because after gasification the product gas increases the heating value of a fuel by rejecting the non-combustible compounds such as water and the nitrogen and it also reduces the carbon to hydrogen mass ratio in the fuel. Since biomass contain more oxygen in its composition with respect to the carbon than coal because as we discussed this concept in one of the lecture the oxygen content in the biomass is significantly high than that of the coal and this particular oxygen content in the biomass influences the gasification process as gasification is a partial oxidation process and the heat released during this particular partial oxidation provides the thermal energy which is required for the gasification process as well. Fuels with high OBIC ratio have a smaller heating value and this concept we discussed in one of the lecture in the previous module than those of the low OBIC ratio that you can see here from this chart as well. The low OBIC ratio material has a relatively higher heating value than that of the high OBIC ratio here. The high heating value is relatively low for the biomass material whereas for the coal and the anthracite the high heating value is relatively high but their OBIC ratio is also relatively low. As discussed in the previous slide, gasification is a partial 
oxidation process or we also term it as a partial combustion process because the heat produced during this partial oxidation and combustion provides the thermal energy which is required for the gasification operation and because of that the gasification is carried out using different mediums that is either oxygen, steam or air and when the oxygen is used as a oxidizing medium or sometimes it is termed as a gasification medium as well. So, at low amount of oxygen the product contain high calorie value gas and that is mainly due to the low impurities like nitrogen and H2S in the exhaust gas stream that is the advantage of utilizing oxygen that is a pure oxygen as a oxidizing medium in the gasification process and when the steam is used as a gasifying medium or oxidizing medium then the product gas contains more hydrogen per unit of the carbon resulting in higher H by C ratio and as we know if the H by C ratio is higher for a specific fuel then its high rating value also known as a caloric value is relatively low and that is what happens in case of the steam as a oxidizing medium because it contains more hydrogen per unit of the carbon resulting in the higher H by C ratio and because of this higher H by C ratio it gives a product gas which has literally moderate heating value and that is also mainly due to impurities like nitrogen and hydrogen sulphide in its composition and when air is used as a oxidizing medium which is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen then the product gas results in lowest caloric value gas and this is primarily due to dilution effect of nitrogen. So, as I mentioned at the beginning itself that when the air is used it is a mixture of oxygen and nitrogen. So, 1 mole of oxygen carries around 3.76 moles of nitrogen and this nitrogen it remains unaffected during this gasification process and may impart dilution effect and because of that it results in lowest caloric value gas when air is used as a oxidizing or the gasifying medium in the gasification process. So, a typical biomass gasification process may involve the following step as shown here in this schematic. During the gasification process, the biomass based feedstock or fossil fuel based feedstock once enter the gasifier, it pass through the drying zone first followed by the pyrolysis zone also called as a thermal decomposition zone where it gets converted into a gaseous and the liquid as well as the char as a product. The gases and the liquid product that is in the form of tar and oil further undergoes the cracking, reforming, combustion and shift reaction to produce the gaseous product along with the cracking products. Parallelly the char also undergoes the gasification combustion and shift reaction to produce this gaseous product and solid residue as a byproduct during this operation. This describes the conventional gasification process and how it takes place in the gasifier. The schematic shown here is a downdraft gasifier typically involves the four distinct zone as shown here in the schematic that is a drying zone, pyrolysis zone that is also termed as a thermal decomposition zone, oxidation zone that is also called as a partial combustion or oxidation zone and reduction zone that is mainly the gasification of the entire oxidized product is getting reduced here in the reduction zone to produce the synthesis gas that is called as a syn gas. So, in this case the biomass once enters the gasifier it undergoes drying operation first where the most of the moisture present in the biomass gets removed followed by thermal degradation in the pyrolysis zone where it gets converted into a gases, tar and char as a product. The pyrolysis product interact among themselves 
as well as with the gasifying medium which is entering at this particular location in the gasifier to form final gaseous product which is mainly happening in the reduction zone here in the gasifier where the oxidized products are getting reduced in the reduction zone to produce synthesis gas along with the ash as a product and this product of the gasification is known as a synthetic gas or syn gas or sometimes it also termed as a fuel gas which is mainly composed of carbon monoxide hydrogen and some stresses of methane along with the co2 the typical gasification yield co the percentage is in between 19 plus minus 3% hydrogen around this much methane as i mentioned the traces of methane can be observed in the gasified product that is around 3% and co2 is around 10% plus minus 2 and the remaining balance is nitrogen and the high reading value for this composition of gas is around 4 to 7 megajoule per meter cube and the heat energy which is required for this drying operation as well as for this pyrolysis operation and several other endothermic reaction which are occurring parallelly in the gasifier is provided by allowing the exothermic partial combustion reaction to certain extent inside the commercial gasifier and that is what i mention here this is a point where oxidizing medium either air oxygen or steam is injected inside the gasifier to allow this partial combustion reaction to take place so that the thermal energy which is produced during this reaction will transfer to the upper zone here that is pyrolysis zone and the drying zone as a result the drying of the incoming material will take place in the continuous manner and after drying the specific temperature which is maintained here which is responsible for the thermal decomposition of this particular dried feed stock which results into the formation of gases tar and char as a product and this gases liquid tar and the char which are produced here which undergoes parallel oxidation and cracking operation here because here the gases and the tar undergoes cracking and the oxidation similarly the reactive hot char also get oxidized here in the presence of oxidizing medium and after that is the reduction zone where these products are getting reduced to form carbon monoxide hydrogen traces of methane and co2 as a product along with solid residue as ash and this table here it depicts the typical gasification reaction occurs in the gasifier so this first two reaction are basically the bordward reaction and the water gas steam reaction both these reactions are endothermic in nature because the plus sign here it indicates heat is absorbed in the reaction and the negative sign here indicates the heat is released in the reaction followed by that is the hydrogasification and the oxidation reaction and these are mostly the exothermic reaction followed by water gas shift reaction and the methanation reaction and all these are exothermic in nature as a result the heat released during this particular reaction is used to balance the heat required for the endothermic reaction in the gasifier similarly the reaction number 13 and the 14 basically are dry reforming and the steam reforming reaction respectively and both these reactions are again in the endothermic in nature and last is the steam reforming reaction that is a exothermic reaction again so if you look at the reaction number 2 13 14 and 15 along with the reaction number 9 here so this reaction mainly produces carbon monoxide and hydrogen as a product whereas reaction number 9 it produces carbon dioxide and hydrogen as a product and most of the other reactions are either oxidation reaction or methanation reaction which produces methane as a product here and this produce methane 
is further undergoes this dry reforming and the steam reforming to produce carbon monoxide and hydrogen as a product and that is the reason some stresses of methane still can be observed in the exhaust gas stream of the gasifier which remains unconverted. So, some parameters are quite influential in the gasification process that is mainly of gasification of the biomass and this particular parameter they have a significant impact on the product yields and composition during the biomass gasification process and this parameter include the feedstock type, quality and the inherent moisture content of the feedstock. Because if the feedstock is of high moisture content then most of the energy goes waste in removing the moisture from the feedstock which eventually results in reducing the product yield as well as reducing the quality of the product and that is the reason some pretreatment operations are essential in such kind of feedstock where the moisture content is sufficiently high or more than the required limit for the gasification process. The particle size and the density of the material is also a crucial parameter during the gasification process. Operating conditions such as temperature, pressure and the reaction time is also one of the important parameter in the gasification process followed by the steam to biomass ratio. If the gasification process is using steam as a medium then steam to gasification ratio need to be maintained properly inside the gasifier. If instead of steam air or the oxygen is being used so accordingly this particular ratio need to be maintained in the gasifier. Air equivalence ratio is a very important parameter that anyway we would be discussing uh, in this particular lecture and this need to be maintained to provide partial oxidation reaction in a gasifier. Similarly, sorbent to biomass ratio, the catalyst, if the gasification is carried out in presence of catalyst, then the percentage of catalyst is also important in the gasification process followed by the reactor configuration. As I mentioned earlier, the equivalence ratio is one of the important parameter in the gasification process because the gasification process is carried out in an oxygen or air deficient environment. And thus, air flow rate or the oxygen flow rate has a significant impact on the product quality during the gasification process. And this equivalence ratio here is defined as the ratio of actual air provided to stoichiometric air which is needed for the gasification process and it is denoted by lambda and this is the equation normally used for the equivalence ratio calculation. The lower equivalence ratio it results in the incomplete char to gas conversion and even it may happen vice versa also. Practically if lambda is less than 0.2 this results in incomplete gasification and may result in the more char formation with low calorific value product gas. If lambda is maintained between 0.2 to 0.3, this is an optimum value which is desired for the gasification process. And if it goes beyond that, if lambda is suppose greater than 0.3, then this alter the gasification into combustion at the cost of overall efficiency of the gasification process because in this case the air it is in the excess amount than required for the partial oxidation process to carry out in the gasification reaction and this excess air may result into the conversion of most of the volatiles into CO2 and as a result it may shift from gasification to combustion operation. In a typical downdraft gasifier, equivalence ratio of 0.25, it gives an optimum product gas yield. So, equivalence ratio of specific range need to be maintained in the gasifier to achieve a optimum product gas yield. Similarly, this hydrogen and carbon monoxide which are the dominant gases in the product stream of the gasifier. So, this fraction in syngas 
are inverse function of ER that means equivalence ratio. Suppose if equivalence ratio is higher then it results in lower hydrogen and carbon monoxide yields with an increase in the carbon dioxide amount in the product stream and this reduces ultimately the calorific value content of the product gas because here the percentage of carbon monoxide and hydrogen is less whereas the percentage of carbon dioxide is relatively high which eventually results into reducing the calorific value content of the product gas. A high equivalence ratio also assists in cracking tar on account of higher oxygen availability for the volatile species to react with. That means in this case if equivalence ratio is slightly higher then it may also assist in the cracking tar because of the higher percentage of oxygen available during the gasification process. Apart from that this excess oxygen which is available in the gasification process also results into the conversion of these volatiles into the CO2 and that is the reason why the CO2 amount increases at higher ER ratio in the gasifier. There is a negligible effect of equivalence ratio on nitrogenous products during the gasification process. Similarly, the bed temperature has a positive impact and it increases linearly with the equivalence ratio provide the feeding rate is kept constant in the gasifier. This particular table here it depicts the comparison of the gasification and the combustion process as both these are the thermochemical conversion processes. So as we know the combustion is carried out under the excess supply of oxygen whereas the gasification is carried out under the partial supply of oxygen and that is also it is termed as a partial oxidation process. So, let us compare these two different thermochemical conversion processes in terms of their mechanism product gas yield as well as the other value added product which can be produced from the exhaust stream of this particular processes. So, first let us discuss about the mechanism here. In case of combustion it breaks down the chemical bond to release the energy. So, the chemical bond in the cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin breaks down to release the energy that is in the form of heat and along with that it also produces CO2 and H2O as a stable product. Whereas in case of gasification it packs the energy into chemical bonds in the form of product gas stream and the product of gasification process include carbon monoxide, hydrogen and hydrocarbon. So, during the gasification process this energy is packed into the chemical bond of this particular gases that is also called as a fuel gas or the product gas. Another aspect of the combustion process is it oxidizes the hydrogen and carbon into water and carbon dioxide as a stable product as I just mentioned here. However, in case of gasification process it adds hydrogen to but strips carbon away from the hydrocarbon feedstock to produce gases with higher H by C ratio. And that is the main difference between the combustion and the gasification process. The product obtained from the combustion process is a flue gas with CO2 and H2O in the product stream whereas gasification process produce fuel gas which also has a calorific value and it includes carbon monoxide, hydrogen and traces of other hydrocarbon gases. CO2 concentration is higher in the combustion process whereas it is lower in the gasification process. SOX and NOX is higher here but lower in the gasification process. Solid waste it can handle large amount of solid waste because it is a complete combustion process so it can handle the large amount of solid waste. However, here it handles smaller amount of the solid waste because we need to maintain the biomass 
to oxidizing medium ratio. So, based on that it can handle respective amount of the solute during the gasification process. Value added products are not produced during this particular combustion process whereas, the product which are obtained from the gasification process can further be processed to produce range of value added products. And this table here it depicts the comparison of conversion of the different element in the gasification and the combustion operation. So, see here that is the carbon is converted into carbon monoxide and other hydrocarbon gases in the gasification process whereas, in the combustion it is completely combusted to produce carbon dioxide. H is getting converted to hydrogen here whereas, in case of combustion it produces H2O nitrogen it remains unaffected in the gasification process and it comes out as it is along with the exhaust gas stream whereas, in case of combustion it gets converted into the NOx. Similarly, S that means, the sulphur here converts into SOx whereas, in case of gasification it forms hydrogen sulphide. So, now let us discuss about the upstream processes which are essential in the gasification process and this upstream processes here it involves the preparation and the pre-treatment of the feedstock before it enters the gasification reactor and these may include the following steps. The feedstock preparation if the source material is not available in the proper form then the feedstock need to be converted into a suitable form such as either slurry or we need to convert it into a powder material as per the process requirement. Its physical and chemical properties need to be optimized for efficient conversion in the gasifier. So, small kind of a treatment or the preparation may require from the feedstock side. Apart from that the second step is a pretreatment. Certain feedstock it may require pretreatment to improve the combustion properties and even the ease of handling and it may include the impurity removal, biomass blending, densification, pelletization and the briquetting. So, by which we can convert the powder material also into a pellet form as well as the briquet form and which eventually helps in the combustion process because as we discussed earlier gasification is also a partial oxidation process or the partial combustion process. So, if the feedstock is available in the proper form then it also helps in partially combusting the material so that it can provide the necessary energy which is required during the gasification process. Storage and handling the prepared feedstock need to be handled properly and store to maintain its quality and prevent from the degradation. And it also involves the protection of the feedstock from contamination and the spontaneous combustion. Similarly, the downstream processes in the gasification process is also essential because the downstream processing in gasification plant primarily focuses on treating and utilizing the syngas produced during the gasification process for further use. So, first important operation in the downstream processing is the cooling of the syngas to suitable temperature range and for which heat exchanger or quenching systems are used to reduce the temperature of the syngas and bring down to a suitable temperature range. Similarly, the cleaning of the syngas because Syngas may contain certain amount of particulate matter, tar, even sulfur and the some acid gas as well. So, this need to be clean before being utilized for the further conversion purpose. So, particulate matter removal, filters or cyclone separators can be used to remove the ash, char and the catalyst fines from the syngas. Similarly, scrubbing, catalytic cracking or the filtration 
are used to remove tar and other organic matter from the skin gas for the removal of the sulfur adsorption absorption or the catalytic conversion systems can be used so that we can remove effectively the sulfur from the skin gas acid gas removal is also essential so that the produced skin gas can be used effectively for further application and if some application involves the catalytic reaction then the presence of these stresses of gases may impact the performance of the catalyst even so this can be removed using the scrubbing and the chemical reaction to capture the acidic gases like hcl and h2s similarly the conditioning of the gas is also important in this case it helps to adjust the syn gas composition to meet the desired h by c ratio and that can be done using the water gas shift reaction so that we can maintain the desired h by c ratio which is required in the syn gas composition the co2 capture as we discussed earlier these are unit like absorption adsorption can be employed to facilitate the carbon capture as well as the storage moisture removal this can be done using the condensation or the drying operation to remove the excess moisture from the flue gas stream followed by the gas conditioning the purification of the gas can also be done using a proper operation that is in the form of pressure swing adsorption membrane separation or cryogenic distillation to separate out the hydrogen gas from rest of the gaseous mixture or even methane can be separated out from the rest of the gaseous mixture using cryogenic distillation and pressure swing adsorption technique and produce purified syn gas can be used for the power generation as mentioned here because syn gas can be used as a fuel in the gas and the steam turbine to generate the electricity apart from that the syn gas can also be used to produce the synthetic fuel like gasoline via fischer trop synthesis process and this is one of the very widely known technique to convert gas into the liquid that is called as a gtl technique gas to liquid technique by fischer trop synthesis process we can convert the syn gas to liquid product like gasoline diesel or jet fuel similarly the syn gas can also be used for the production of the chemical such as methanol ammonia or hydrogen as we just discussed before either we can separate out the hydrogen during this gas purification technique or it can be syn gas can further be converted into the hydrogen using a suitable chemical reaction industrial application it can be used as a source of heat fuel or as a reducing agent in the metallurgical industries so the syn gas has wide range of application it can directly be used as a fuel in gas or steam turbine to generate electricity or it can be processed further to produce synthetic fuel or also it can be used to produce value added chemicals this covers our discussion on the conventional gasification processes apart from the conventional gasification processes advanced gasification technologies are also available for the conversion of solid feedstock into useful and convenient product gas that can be burned to release energy or can be converted into useful product and this advanced gasification technology includes sub and supercritical water gasification plasma gasification and integrated gasification combined cycle which is also called as igcc so let us discuss about this advanced gasification technology one by one as we discussed earlier the gasification it finds wide application including in the field of electricity generation chemical production and fuel synthesis so because of that there are continuous efforts to improve the efficiency environmental impact 
and versatility of gasification processes the most recent advancement in gasification technology it includes supercritical water gasification and sometime this operation is also carried out under the subcritical water range plasma gasification and integrated gasification combined cycle that is also termed as igcc so in this module our focus is on supercritical water gasification and plasma gasification techniques sub and supercritical water gasification is also termed as hydrothermal gasification technique and if you look at this particular point here on the graph it is a critical point of water and this indicate here the critical temperature and this is a critical pressure and above its critical point the water is termed as a supercritical water so this particular zone here which indicates the supercritical water region and under this condition the water shows distinctive reactivity and the solvency properties and which lie between those of the liquid and gases so this solvency property here is of such nature that it lies between that of the liquid and gases so it can also impart the some of the properties of liquid and it can also impart some of the properties of the gases and these properties makes the sub and the supercritical water an excellent medium for the biomass gasification so if you look at this particular graph here it shows the properties of water with changing temperature and the pressure the dielectric constant which uh, measures the ability of a substance to store the electrical energy in an electric field it controls the solvent behavior and dissolving capacity of the water the dielectric constant of the water it decreases this black line it shows the dielectric constant of the water and it decreases with increasing temperature and the pressure and the reduced dielectric constant increase the solvation behavior of ions and molecules in the supercritical water thus making it an excellent medium for the thermochemical reaction and that is also for the biomass gasification now if you talk about the density and the viscosity the density as well as the viscosity decreases dramatically near the critical condition and which allows better mass transfer and the mixing behavior during the chemical reaction including the biomass gasification because in case of density here if you see this graph of the density the density of this supercritical water it varies non linearly this behavior is non linear in nature with temperature and the pressure and at supercritical condition the density of water becomes closer to that of gas density of water becomes closer to that of gas which still allows for substantial solvation capacity and this unique density behavior it plays a crucial role in the solubility and the transport of reactant making supercritical water an excellent candidate for other chemical reaction as well as for the biomass gasification the ionic product of the water here it refers to the equilibrium constant for the ato ionization reaction of water into the hydronium ion and the hydroxide ion in the aqueous solution the ionic product of this supercritical water is 
significantly higher and that is due to the lower dielectric constant and the enhanced dissociation of the water molecule into hydronium ion and the hydroxide ions and presence of these ions can enhance the reaction kinetics and also favors certain chemical transformation and because of that this sub and the supercritical water gasification technique is widely being used to convert the solid as well as the wet feedstock material into gaseous product and even with high quality of the product. So, as I mentioned the supercritical water gasification it can be applied to the wet biomass feedstock as well because in that case then no need of any pre-processing of the feedstock is required because the wet biomass can directly be used as a feedstock material in the supercritical water gasification process because here the medium is used as a water. So, the moisture content in the feedstock itself is sufficient enough to provide the medium which is required for the supercritical water gasification reaction. However, some additional amount of water still required to reach to the critical temperature of water in the reaction condition. It also involves diverse feed material such as lignocellulosic biomass, algae, agro and the food waste because it also contains higher amount of the moisture in its composition. Sewage sludge also has significant amount of the moisture and the industrial effluents. So, such wet biomass based feedstock can be easily gasified using the supercritical water gasification system and it also found suitable for fossil fuel feedstock including the coal, bitumen, petroleum coke, asphaltene, diesel oil and the organic solvent. The product gas of the supercritical water gasification system mainly comprises of hydrogen, carbon dioxide, methane and the carbon monoxide. However, the tar and the coke formation are controlled by rapid dissolution of the product gas component in the supercritical water and that is what is the advantage of this process here that tar and the coke formation can be controlled using this particular technique because of the rapid dissolution of the produced gas in the supercritical water medium. And this scheme here it represents the supercritical water gasification process. So, here the wet feedstock undergoes the supercritical water gasification operation and the hot product gas produced at the end of the process is passed through this heat exchange unit where it is allowed to exchange the heat with the incoming effluent cold stream so that the hot stream which comes out from the this unit is passed on to the second heat exchange unit where it can reach to a required temperature of the supercritical water gasification and the product which is coming out from this exchanger unit is passed on to phase separator unit here to separate out the product gas from water. And this is how the supercritical water gasification system operate to produce good quality product. So, another important advanced technology is the plasma gasification. It is one of the fundamental states of matter and can be generated either by heating a gas or by exposing gas to a strong electromagnetic field. The types of plasma it includes the thermal plasma and the cold plasma. The thermal plasma is created at an ambient pressure but while cold plasma is produced under vacuum and this is the difference between the cold plasma and the thermal plasma and this thermal plasma is generally produced at temperature of around 4700 degree Celsius or even higher using gases such as argon, nitrogen, hydrogen, water vapor or a gas mixture or it can be produced using AC or DC arc plasma torch generators. 
this plasma is used in two different ways in the gasification process first it is used as a heat source during the gasification operation or even it is used for tar cracking after the standard gasification process so this schematic here it represent the plasma gasification system so the major factor which affect the gas yield and quality of the gas during the plasma gasification process are torch input power particle size and the feedstock type and the heat which is required for the plasma gasification is supplied using a non transferred dc arc plasma torch generator here and energy is simultaneously produced from the biomass gasification system here because as we discussed earlier the gasification is a partial oxidation process so the amount of energy released during this combustion and the oxidation process is simultaneously used during this gasification operation and the advantage of this plasma gasification process is it gives high syngas yield with high hydrogen and co content improved caloric value gas and low co2 and the tar yield this is one of the important benefit of the plasma gasification process where it gives low co2 and the tar yield it is also used for the wet biomass material such as sewage sludge which are otherwise difficult to gasify because of the higher moisture content in the sewage sludge it is difficult to gasify such fish stock to produce good quality gas however it can be gasified easily using the plasma gasification system at elevated temperature the gasification of the fish stock occurs in the milliseconds so this is one of the major advantage of this plasma gasification process that the gasification of the fish stock can be carried out in milliseconds and this particular part in the plasma gasification system represents the slag which is produced during the gasification process however this plasma gasification process also has certain limitation because it has high construction and the maintenance cost and that is mainly due to the high electricity consumption to generate the plasma and because of that the overall energy efficiency of the plasma gasification is lower than the other techniques so in plasma gasification system as well this upper portion represent the low temperature zone and this bottom part here it represent the high temperature zone here basically the arc plasma torch generation takes place as a result the temperature is sufficiently high in this particular zone and the heat released during this operation here is transferred in the upward direction to the top of the plasma gasification system so as a result here the temperature is relatively low than that of the temperature which is available here in the bottom portion and this particular low temperature zone here is also essentially useful to remove the excess moisture which is present in the incoming feedstock material application of the plasma gasification system current uh, primary application of this plasma gasification is in the treatment of the hazardous waste it is also employed for the decomposition of the toxic organic waste along with the rubber and the plastic and also it is applied for the syngas production and electricity generation as it is economically competitive with the other commercial techniques the slag which is produced during this plasma gasification is a non hazardous and non leachable glass like material and it can find its application or use in a construction industries and there are few functioning plant which are using the plasma gasification technique and also in operation in japan canada and india 
one such plasma gasification plant at Japan is operational since 2002 and it has been gasifying around 268 tons of municipal solid waste per day to produce 7.9 megawatt hour of electricity. So, this kind of plants are operational in few places for the management of waste that is in the form of hazardous waste or toxic organic waste or even the municipal solid waste are is also getting converted to produce good amount of the electricity using this technique. This table here it depicts the comparison of the conventional gasification with that of the advanced gasification techniques. So, in terms of feedstock compatibility, the conventional gasification preferred dry feedstock including the biomass, coal, coke and MSW while the supercritical water gasification technique can handle wet and high moisture feedstock including sludge, algae, biomass, organic waste etc. Similarly, in case of plasma gasification, dry or wet feedstock including the biomass, municipal solid waste, industrial and the hazardous waste are compatible in plasma gasification system. Operating condition here, the temperature in case of conventional gasification, it varies between 700 to 1500 degree C and pressure is around 10 to 40 bar, whereas in case of supercritical water gasification, the operating conditions are like this and in case of plasma gasification, the temperature is way higher that is around close to 5000 degree Celsius. However, the entire operation takes place at atmospheric pressure. Gasification time minutes to several hours, whereas in case of supercritical water gasification, it varies between say 10 second to maximum up to 120 minute, while in case of plasma gasification, the entire operation takes only milliseconds. Source of heat, the partial oxidation of the feedstock provides the thermal energy which is required for the gasification in the conventional gasification system. However, in case of supercritical water gasification, the external heat source is required either the heat produced using combustion of biomass or the steam. In this case, intensely hot plasma arc generated using the electricity is used as a heat source where the temperature reaches up to even 5000 degree Celsius and the heat generated from such hot plasma arc is used for the gasification operation in the plasma gasification process. So, composition of the syngas using conventional gasification process is shown here. However, in case of supercritical water gasification, relatively high amount of H2O vapors is observed along with less methane contained in its composition. However, in case of plasma gasification, higher hydrogen content and lower impurities are observed in the syngas. Process efficiency high process efficiency observed in the conventional gasification process, high energy input for pre-drying of biomass. Here also the energy conversion is relatively high. The nutrient recovery in biochar, complete destruction of feedstock into cleaner syngas and the inert slag. So, the slag produced in plasma gasification is inert in nature and hence as just discussed few slides back, it can find its application in the construction material. Energy efficiency here, it is around 60 to 80 percent. However, in case of supercritical water gasification, it is up to 80 percent and in case of plasma gasification, it is slightly low that is around 50 to 60 percent because most of the energy goes in generating 
a high temperature which is required for the plasma gasification process that is close to around 5000 degree Celsius. Operating and the maintenance cost, it is low here. This is medium increase of supercritical water gasification technique. However, we already discussed this particular point. The operating and the maintenance cost is relatively high in case of plasma gasification technique. Environmental impact, it produces tar and the particulate matter in the conventional gasification process. Also produces greenhouse gas emissions and required additional gas cleaning setup. However, in case of supercritical water gasification, lower emissions, the nutrient recovery in byproduct is also applicable here. Plasma gasification, it helps in the hazardous waste management as we discussed here. It can also use to decompose the hazardous waste as well as the toxic solid waste. It also minimizes the emission and the metal recovery. The syngas produced from the gasification process finds wide application in the field of fuel as well as in the production of value added chemicals. For example, here if you see syngas is also known as a synthesis gas and it is a mixture of carbon monoxide, hydrogen and often carbon dioxide and that is produced by gasification of the carbon containing material such as coal, biomass or natural gas even. And this syngas it has a wide range of application as I just mentioned. It can be used as a feedstock for the production of variety of chemicals and fuels. And some application of this syngas includes in the field of production of the chemicals. Syngas can be used as a feedstock for the production of the variety of the chemicals including methanol, ammonia, synthetic natural gas. Also it can be used for the production of the liquid fuel because syngas can be converted into the liquid fuel such as gasoline, diesel and jet fuel through process called fissure troughs synthesis. And this point we already discussed about the conversion of syngas into the liquid product. Also it finds application in the power generation because syngas can be used as a fuel for power generation in the gas turbines or combined cycle power plants. Syngas can be used as a source of hydrogen for fuel cells or other application. And some of the important reaction of the syngas are shown here that is water gas shift reaction. In this reaction the carbon monoxide and the water vapor reacts to produce carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas and this reaction is often used to increase the hydrogen content of syngas. The fissure trough synthesis process. So in this reaction syngas majorly the carbon monoxide and the hydrogen converted into the liquid hydrocarbon through a series of catalytic reaction and that is what is the importance of the fissure trough synthesis process by which the syngas can be converted into liquid hydrocarbon product and that is also the range of liquid hydrocarbon product. The dimethyl ether synthesis this is also one of the important reaction which can be carried out using the syngas. So in this reaction the syngas reacts over a catalyst to produce dimethyl ether that is also commonly termed as DME which can be used as a fuel or feedstock for the production of the chemicals. So this represents the reaction of syngas using a suitable catalyst to produce dimethyl ether. Apart from that the hydroformylation reaction in this case the syngas reacts with an olefin to produce the aldehyde and this reaction is also used in the production of a variety of the chemicals including the plasticizer and the detergents. And the oxidative coupling reaction in this case the syngas is converted into the hydrocarbon through a series of reaction and this reaction is used in the production of variety of the chemicals and as well as the fuel. 
the reaction of this syngas are versatile and can be used to produce wide range of the chemicals and the fuels and the choice of the reaction it mainly depends on the specific application and the desired product which need to be produced using syngas conversion reaction fischer tropsch synthesis is a very widely used reaction for the conversion of syngas to produce wide range of hydrocarbon product including the alkanes alkenes oxygenates such as alcohol and the aldehydes and the conversion as well as the production of this different hydrocarbon here it depends on certain parameter that is temperature pressure and the catalyst used during this conversion processes this fischer tropsch synthesis process it takes place at three distinct temperature ranges that is high temperature range which varies between 300 to 350 degree celsius medium temperature range it varies between 250 to 300 degree celsius and the low temperature range it is between 200 to 250 degree celsius and based on this temperature range the choice of the product can be produced by converting syn gas with the help of fischer tropsch synthesis process over a metal catalyst at high pressure that is between 10 to 40 atmospheric pressure this ft synthesis process is useful for the production of range of products from gasoline to specialty chemicals and waxes and this particular synthesis process is useful in the situation where the production of the liquid fuel from the biomass is desired and some most common hydrocarbon synthesize using ft process are shown here in this particular slide that is synthesis of methane paraffins olefins and alcohols this covers our discussion on the different thermochemical conversion processes so the next lecture that is third lecture of the module 4 will practice few example on heat and mass balance in the pyrolysis process heat and mass balance in the gasification process followed by that we'll try to solve one example on equivalence ratio as well as we'll try to solve one example on ft synthesis process with the help of one specific reaction we'll try to find out the product which can be obtained from the ft process thank you mm -hmm.